Ah, I see what you're doing. I like I like how you think. Okay, good. So ah, come on, the first episode back. You can start with so. Of course. <laughs> they know. <laughs> like we changed for you. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it's man, it is different to be back in the car. I, I miss this. We get, you know, we get the little, we get the taste during the bye week, and then right back to our. I would much rather be in the car the week after the Super Bowl. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. But you know what? Picking 30th, it's a problem we don't know. Why are they picking 30th? Can you explain? I can, I can, yeah. So the reason they're picking 30th is because, technically speaking, they had a better record. They had, better, uh, they, they had a better strength of schedule victories against oh. the Packers. Oh, the Packers. even though they both won 13 games. It doesn't matter. The Bills, the Bills had like a point. 518 strength of schedule and then the Packers have like a point four seven whatever. Uh, well the strength of the schedule gets even more because of what the Bills were able to do. Now they're gonna be playing all the division winners yeah. of the opposite league. So yeah, it's gonna, just gonna get harder, right? Because so they're just gonna keep getting lower and lower picks if they when they tie with like teams. You know, it's it's gonna be what happens. So so be it, right? We can't all uh, we can't all play the NFC East. What? Brain freeze? NFC East. The NFC East. Remember so, the AFC South used to be like the graveyard of of football. Like well, they will again. Don't worry. <laughs> but Brian Dable. Yeah, Brian Dable, Leslie Frazier. So, I think this is important to talk about, right? Because Frazier did not get the Houston job. That's actually a big deal. Dable didn't get the did. Chargers job. You know, me too. Not that. That job's going to be hell. Oh, yeah. You, you're, if Cully's in there, he's like, listen, I need like a seven-year plan. Okay? Because mm. I have to erase some of this chaos you gave me. You hired a guy who has been a QB coach for most of his career, right? But fact of the matter is, if you fall on the sword and your hire was David Cully, nobody's mad at you. Right? If in two years you're like, yeah, this isn't working, you're like, well, okay, we didn't invest much in that. Whatever, right? I think what they needed to do was bring it back, Houston, as far as that goes. They needed to. You couldn't bring a big, really big name guy in there. I mean, bringing Cully in. I mean, if you brought a big, big name guy to try to keep Watson, then you're doing it for the wrong reason. But if you bring Cully in, who's not really a huge name guy, like, hey, maybe he'll develop a rapport with him. Maybe he won't. And Lots you look at the staff, so Cully's been around the league, so he's got some good connections for guys that need jobs right now. So, I mean, he's he'll build he'll build a good staff. He'll be able to build a good staff. There's just not any resources there. But, but going to Leslie Frazier, I would have been happy to see the Bills revisit the way that they want to play defense. Because here's the, here's the problem. I don't see McDermott and Bean firing Frazier or David. I don't think there's cause to fire either. No, there isn't. There is. There's no cause to fire either. And if you fire either of them, you're taking their shot at being a head coach and shooting it right in the foot. Let them give up 35 points a game in the first four games next year. But that's but that's different, right? Because no, but I'm had... saying you were saying last year by like week five, they will be gone if the numbers don't improve. Mm -hmm. The numbers improved, yep. so he wasn't fired. Right, but. I, I I seriously have taken my foot off the gas when it comes to Brian Dable. Are there some plays that he calls where I'm like, what are, you, what are you doing? But, and I don't care who says this or who gets mad about this, we're never going to definitively know unless they tell us personally, which they never will on a public platform, Dable or Allen tell us what happened with certain plays. Yeah, that's true. Like yeah, you can't watch film and know exactly what the intent of a play was. You if, just don't know. If Allen goes to throw to, to John Brown, he's supposed to run a hitch and he runs a go. And then he keeps the ball and he gets sacked. Oh, what the hell, David? What are you designing? Mm -hmm. That's on that's on John Brown. Mm -hmm. If it's Allen makes the wrong read, that's not on Dable. 
if Dable calls up a play that doesn't systematically work and Allen doesn't check out of it, that's on Allen. Mm -hmm. I mean, we'll never definitively know. There are. Can we can we get <clears throat> can we be upset about some of his play calls at certain times? Sure. I feel like that was on purpose. <laughs> hey! Mr. Rogers is still with us in the back. <laughs> uh, those of you who are unaware, that's our partner, Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers Holmes, you're looking to move out of the snow. That we just did. <laughs> but that, be, that all being said, I've taken my foot off the gas when it comes to Brian Table because I put it immediately on the brake so you can mom's seatbelt on me. Thanks a lot for that. It's the little things, guys. <laughs> <laughs> what is it gonna what is it gonna take to get you to believe in Brian Dable? I, I it's I'm forever a doubter. Okay. Oh that's fine. Yeah, you know, I'm just forever a doubter. That's and fine. here's and here's why, right? Mm -hmm. I look at a Brian Dable play design. And I look at an Andy Reid play design. And Andy Reid has okay. so much smoke and mirrors going on. That's what I want, right? If I have if I have an offense coordinator, I want the guy who you can run the same play three jerk. times. You're and such a jerk. Here's the deal. Mahomes, I looked at my kid's finger painting. I looked at the Sistine Chapel. <laughs> <laughs> like, why can't they be Why the can't same? they be there? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, I don't have to fire my kids. <laughs> it's for me, yeah, right? Yeah. For me. Mahomes can walk to the line and doesn't have to make a check in an Andy Reid system. I think that's what's so fascinating about the offensive system that they run is he doesn't have to make audio to verbal checks. If he just wants to run, hand, turn around and hand the ball off, he can. Like, there was a play late in the game. Tyree faked a bubble screen on, okay. an, on a handoff. Yeah. If Mahomes decided, snaps the ball, is like, nope, and just decides to throw the screen, Hill was there. The play design was to run. But that play showed me that at any point, Mahomes can do whatever he wants. A play within a play. A play within a play, right. Allen has to make checks to make that stuff happen. And you saw in the very first quarter of the game, they had that figured out. They knew all of Allen's checks. Like, there was no question about it. Anytime Allen tried to check out of something, the defense checked to something else, and the play went nowhere. So in your mind, the Kansas City offense is built like the Harlem Globetrotters, mm -hmm. and the Buffalo offense is the Washington Generals. That's right. <laughs> They're That's very right. deliberate. Mm -hmm. That's it. <laughs> no, I – yeah, like – it just comparing Reed to Dable is unfair. I think it's I got unfair. Jealous. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Plus, when you have all those freaking weapons out there, you know, and, and a lot of people will probably say, "Hey, for, I didn't like Fraser's scheme." Well, you didn't like it in the first game either. Well, keep everything in front of you. That's what it was. We have to score on every possession. That didn't happen. You were gifted six points. When when you have coordinators who are interviewing for head coaching jobs. You're limited in what you can do with them because remember they're trying to build staff behind the scenes. Like let's be real. Like you know that Dable's gone up to some of his folks and be like, Hey, listen, I'm talking would if you be I... interested if I went to if I went to LA? Would you be interested? Now those people's minds, now they're looking down the road, right? Even though Dable's responsible for the interview, Dable's like, Hey, listen, I'm would you be interested in this? And that takes their mind off of things, right? And then he brings that to the table as well. But, Here's one thing I'm bringing. But you know what it also does? It limits your ability to change your staff, right? Because now, let's say the Bill's like, listen, we can't have what happened. We need more speed. And you're like, well, I know I just offered you a job in L.A., you know, four weeks ago. But, you know, our running game was pretty terrible. And you were my running, running game coordinator, so I'm going to have to let you go. Right, you can't do that stuff. Like it's yeah. you now you're stuck, right? The coordinators that you offer the people that you offer jobs to, you're stuck with them now. They're they're there with you. That's it. Because yeah. you know these guys were trying to build staff staff behind the behind the scenes. They had to move. They had to move. There's no way <laughs> Dable and Frazier weren't. If Dable wasn't, he was making a mistake. I'm sure Frazier did. Now we're in neutral. We're exactly where we're going to be next year, right now. And that's that's troublesome to me. Yeah. Is there something to be said about the consistency, though? Because I, th I saw changes that Frazier made this year. Mm -hmm. I saw a lot of changes. With personnel comes changes. You get star back, it's got to be a big deal. You probably don't have Milano. Wallace is a restricted free agent or exclusive rights free agent. One of those two. I know he'll be back. I know he'll, he'll be back because <laughs> you have to be you have to sign Buffalo, basically. 
Uh, we're going to talk contracts in another episode, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. But sure. the, the look of the team may be a little bit different because of personnel because we, we said a year ago, the timetable on this defense is ticking. Like, yeah. You high can't, you can't, are getting beat up back there. You can't put another year with the incumbents out there again. Like, you got to freshen things up. And that's why I was hoping for a new defensive coordinator, kind of maybe somebody who was willing to, like, get some aggressive corners, like, man corners. Like, let's just change it up a little bit, right? We got, I think you got to change it up a little bit. But it's not. It's not going to happen. Like, they're not going to let Frazier go. They're not going to let Dave go. We're going to be exactly where we are next year. And if you're comfortable with that, then great. But I, I know there's a lot of people who are going to want change. Are you one of those people? Do you want do you want change? I think that naturally he'll he'll come up with different schemes for different teams. Okay. But you you finished you finished the year as the second best team in the AFC. The conference championship game proved that. You are number two by a little bit of a gap now. Can you make the necessary adjustments to beat that team? Well, in the Kansas City defense is not better than the Buffalo defense. Let's just put that out on the table right now. They're not better. But Spagnolo is a genius. I think that's I think that's a big difference. Well, I wouldn't go far as a genius, but he was he was on point. He had Dable figured out. Yeah, yeah, I, and yeah. that was not good. Well, I think you know. Well, and two, I, they there was also a ton of like the corners were so aggressive. And Buffalo playing zone, you're just never you're never aggressive with your wide receiver, like with your closing wide receiver. No, no, and you, you want to talk about Beasley had a broken fibula. Tibby, whatever. Broken leg. He's got a broken leg. Gabe Davis was. He put that team on his back like Greg Jennings. <laughs> I do it for Madden. Put the team on my back. Cross the plane. <laughs> Touchdown. 